Welcome, everybody. We are here once again for another great show. I hope everybody is doing great. Everybody's uh, out doing their thing. I know I am. It is summertime, so I'm busy out in the yard, out in the gardens, doing lots of stuff, working on my food forest. So been very busy, but I am excited to be here. We got a great guest lined up. We're going to be covering a lot of important topics, I feel, that are very important in what's going on in our world today. These are uncomfortable topics. These are topics that make people uh, uneasy to talk about. But you know me. I think that that is where great things can happen is when you are willing to bring these topics to the front, talk about them openly. And I think that is where great things can be. Great things can happen when this is allowed to take place. And I think people that ignore these or push them down and they're because they are uncomfortable to talk about is not the way to go. You have to talk about these things. And these are going to be some uncomfortable topics, hard topics, as I said. But I'm willing to go in there. I'm No topic for me is off limits. I really, truly do stand by that. And I'm going to prove it today with my guest. We are going to be getting into some great stuff here. So I don't want to babble too much at the beginning here because I'd rather get to my guest. I'm excited to get them on the show once again. I've had them on a few times. And amazing. I learned so much from them. I had them on my radio show. They've been on the Crypt Rick and Jonathan show. So I'm excited. I am just going to go ahead and get my guest on here. Just give me one sec here, guys. There we go. Alrighty. Welcome, Will Keller. It's so great to have you back. How are you doing, my friend? I'm doing well, Rick. Thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure, and I'm looking forward to this convo. I am too. What I've been thinking about since we started uh, putting this interview together and talking about doing it, and I really do pride myself, Will, on being willing to go into the hard areas, the hard topics, because as I was saying at the beginning, I think that that is what needs to be done, and I think a lot of people avoid them. They are uncomfortable topics we're going to be getting into, but they need to be talked about. But before we do that, I just want to let you give you a chance right here at the beginning. I know that Funnel 3 is really approaching quick, and I want to let uh, this moment to let you, let everybody know. I'd rather, I'd like to have you um, let people know how Funnel started and then uh, talk about Funnel 3 and what people can look forward to coming up. Excellent. Yeah, no, we have the third Freedom Under Natural Law Conference, and this is a free online event. Uh, we have fantastic presenters. It's going to be June 24th and 25th. Um, so this will be online. It's free to the public. You can go to freedomundernaturallaw.com. You can register and get all the links there and check out all the the um, the presenters. We have a high caliber um, A list of just fantastic uh, truth seekers and truth speakers. So the the funnel conference it started uh, with a- actually from a support group uh, during the whole pandemic. Uh, you know, like-minded individuals, most of us in our local area kind of connected on social media. And we started doing Sunday uh, support meetings where we would just, you know, support each other in our projects and our endeavors, what we had going on in our lives. And we did this for, you know, well over a year and a half. And then it got to the point as we started getting close, we started going out onto the street and doing uh, you know, street promotion, setting up booths, talking about natural law, freedom, human rights. And uh, and that kind of um, led the springboard to, to taking on bigger projects. And then we decided to do an online virtual event and we titled it Funnel, which is an acronym for Freedom Under Natural Law. So uh, Funnel One was just our group as presenters. It was a huge success. Then we moved to Funnel Two. And that was called Convergence. Mm -hmm. Uh, We brought on outside content creators. That was even a bigger success. We had tons of support. And now we're at Funnel 3. And uh, I'm very honored to have you, Rick, on uh, as part of the the organizers and really looking forward to it. So that's June 24th and 25th next month. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm going to make sure that I leave links for all of that so you guys can go and register. And what I think, too, Will, just to wrap it up, that is really unique about Funnel is that at the end, I like to let people know that at the end of each day, if you have questions for any of the speakers that you hear that day, write them down because at the very end of the day, there's going to be a live uh, panel. There's going to be a round table of all those creator, uh, all the presenters for that day. And if you want to ask them questions, you're going to be able to do that. I think that makes it very unique and it's really cool that you guys are doing that. 
Yeah, you know, the presentations are phenomenal. Right. Uh, the roundtable at the end is is my favorite part, right? Because now we're we're live. We're doing the roundtable live. We can take questions. Uh, we can have people call in and ask their questions live um, or take them through the chat. And we really get this chemistry of going back and forth on these topics. And like you said, starting this this interview, right, we need to get out of our comfort zone. Mm -hmm. This is where the lessons lie. So it's really important to have these conversations. And, you know, with the topics that are going to go down today, if you are emotionally unstable, which you will know if you are, if you get triggered, right, you'll feel it inside you. You will have a physical response. You need to observe that and ask yourself why. But this is how we evolve in consciousness. We have these tough conversations and we use our main quality as human beings, and that's logic and reason and care. And we work through these topics to get to a solution of higher consciousness. I agree. Well said, my friend. And yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to it. I, like I said, uh, I think that just that that uh, having that round table at the end to me is so unique. And so I just hope that people are when they do. Write your questions down, guys, and they can get answered. And I think that's great. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm glad to be a part of it. Very excited. It's coming up, guys. I will leave links in the description. With that out of the way, though, Will, we got some great topics to get into, some important topics. And I think we should start because I think this is going to lay the foundation and we can build off of this. And it's a topic that I hear people discuss a lot. And people do get very, I get different reactions when uh, this topic is brought up. And I just want to ask you and start at this point blank, the current way that humanity is and the way that society is structured, are we living in a slave system? Excellent question. So what we need to do is we need to observe society, right? We need to observe the, the greater world. And we can even do this within, within our, our local areas as well. And uh, the foundation to this question, the answer is understanding um, who we are and why are we here and, of course, the interactions that we have with the natural world and with each other, right? So this is rooted in natural rights. I mean, if you look at you know the government and the structures of civilization that we have, it's all based on, well, they call it now, they call it democracy, mm -hmm. right? And I mean, even in some countries you have communism and, and all these other terms and labels, but what do they mean? What, do, what are they constructed of? What are the effects? So even if we uh, say that we have a democratic society and, and we're in, you know, I'm in America, so, you know, we consider this a free country, mm -hmm. but is it really, right? So we need to understand what freedom is, and this is all based on natural rights. So I'm going to define freedom, the most important topic uh, for human beings, for actually it, for everything, for reality, existence. Freedom is unrestricted free will expression. Right. You have the right to live, to exist, to evolve, to move forward, to pr uh, progress. Mm -hmm. This is what consciousness is all about. It wants to expand. It wants to um, um, have more complexity and uniqueness. So this is I mean, we can see this in the natural world from, you know, plant life to animals, uh, you know, plant life expanding um, and and propagating. Right. I mean, you, you, you're a gardener, so, yep. you know, if you don't maintain your garden, it will it will grow out of your garden and it will keep growing. Yep. Same with your lawn, any type of landscape. This is what it wants to do. It wants to spread and propagate. Animals want to roam and they want to propagate and reproduce. And and same thing with humans. Right. We want to e interact. We want to grow and expand. Right. So this is expressing our, our free will choice as human beings. So if it's unrestricted free will expression, you know, the opposite of freedom is restricted free will expression, controlling your ability to, to be free, to express yourself. So this is, you know, goes hand in hand with, with natural rights. We have right. the right to live. We have the right to exist. So what is a right? That's a, a, that's a key question. And I've asked people that, yeah. Will, and they don't know. 
They can't give you a definition of it. They go all over the. I've had people say that a government a right is something the government gives you. Uh, very rarely, I don't. Very rare does somebody tell me the real definition of a right. Uh, yeah, it's it's incredible, but it's it's so it's, it's so foundational, right? I mean, and this is when people want to spread awareness and 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 try to connect with someone. Start very simply on the foundation. If we don't have our foundation solid, then you know the walls, the roof. Um, as an allegory are just going to crumble down. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what is a right? The definition of a right is any action or behavior that does not cause harm to another being, right? right? Meaning that you are not restricting their free will expression. So this is very important. Um, and you know, we look at all the governments and we look at society and we, we must observe this. Our we expressing ourselves unrestricted. And if you're being honest with yourself, the answer is no. <clears throat> On a day-to-day -day basis, we are until you have interactions with, you know, police yep. and uh, either the military or the government. We can look at taxation. We can look at uh, traffic stops, right? These are, I mean, the, the traffic stops is just literally pirates stopping you. There's no victim. There's no harm caused. No right has been violated. They're stopping you from a relative uh, code or regulation that a group of people deem is necessary to extort funds, resources from you. So th there's the violation right there saying, oh, you weren't wearing a seatbelt or you have a taillight out or you are traveling upon the earth without the documents that we right. say you must have, right? So what, what is going on is there's the violation of a natural right right there. So this is a claim. What, what they are saying and what this means is that you cannot travel upon the earth. And I'm using this as, as an example. There's many examples, but you know, traveling for an, for as an, as the example, right? You cannot travel upon the earth, move upon the earth. Um, Unless you have these documents, unless we say you can. So this is a claim of ownership saying we own your persons, your mm -hmm. body, your property. This is what our body and what we own is. This is our property. Um, so that's the claim of ownership. Now, that is another definition. That is the definition of slavery. Now, when I say this word you know, the majority of people instantly go to a, uh, a self perceived definition, right? right. I mean, in, in America, when you say slavery, the majority of people think of, you know, the civil, the civil war era with, with, you know, black chattel slavery, yep. um, which, you know, that, that's a horrible time period. And I will say this, every race on this planet has been in shackles and chains, every race. That's very so, true. So you, that's a limited, limited uh, perception of just referring to that time, that horrible time period in, in history, in American history. So but that is a limited perception, right? The actual definition of slavery is a claim of ownership mm -hmm. upon another. That's it. So when we look at, you know, taxation, uh, we look at um, license, permits, um, all of this stuff, everything that how government operates is a claim of ownership, right? Absolutely. So it's yep. saying it's it's based upon moral relativism, saying that you must obey our dictates and commands. So it's creating a master class and a slave class. If you do not obey the master class and its dictates, then you will be harmed. You will be violated. You will be put into submission by any means necessary, even death. So when we ask ourselves, are we living in a, uh, you know, a slave system? The answer is absolutely yes. Doesn't matter if you think that, um, oh, you know, well, human structure, human needs, some, you know, human beings need some type of leadership or cooperation or organization. That's a whole separate conversation. Right. We can organize and cooperate and build systems that interact with each other without violating natural rights. 
a without, voluntary system is what I, I, I like to call ab- it. <laughs> absolutely. Think yeah. about your day-to-day life, right? You you go to work voluntarily, right? You go to the store voluntarily. Uh, people bag your groceries. You get to choose what you want to buy. So most of our interactions on a day-to-day basis are it's voluntary interactions. Mm-hmm. Yet there is this system that is – claiming ownership upon human beings, upon animals, upon the land, the air, the earth, the water, right? Okay. You can look at uh, you know another acronym for law is land, air, water. Mm-hmm. So when we look at man's law, it's human beings claiming the land, air, and water and everything that is on that within that right. within that system. That's the problem. Wow. And what I want to ask you is you were talking about travel uh, how they were restricted. And it just, I want to touch on this before we go any further, just because I've had this conversation very recently with a friend of mine. And we got into this because as you know, what's going on in the news, they're talking about this people coming over the border. And this is a big debate right now that people are just flooding over the border. Now, what I want to ask you is because we're talking about laws and I get it. And and the reason I'm, I'm kind of coming at this from the devil's advocate kind of point of view, Will, and kind of like my friend was talking and we were just going back and forth. I just want to discuss this mm-hmm. is why I bring it up. Cool. I totally get that we should have, we should be able to free to move free wherever we want. We should be able to go where we want and not be restricted. My friend was kind of saying that there, it changed the dynamic of this changes when you start adding borders. This is where it come. This is where the dynamic changes because that's kind of like where the where he was like going with it is that okay? Like I get it. You should be able to move freely anywhere you want. And if we didn't have borders, that would make total sense. But as soon as you start putting borders up, that's where the argument comes in. I just want to get your thoughts on that. And I, yes, yeah. out of the blue. I'm just sorry I sprung it on you, but I'm just really no. Curious. It's fine. You know, I I I get these type of uh, questions all the time when I'm interacting with people, cool. and we need to understand the the philosophy, right? The philosophical aspects and truth, right? Like what we, what I was just stating is truth. It's objective truth, right? Rights are objective. So now most people, when they hear these, this type of information, they, they look at the world and they immediately just take out government. So the world we're living in now, let's just take out government, right? So it's going to be chaos and, you know, there's going to be death and, and, and mobs and all this kind of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. We have to understand that the way society is right now, it is inverted. We are in opposition to the rhythm of life and how things are. So when we're talking about a society based in true freedom, this is a this is going to be a long progression of learning and discussion, right? It's not going to just happen overnight. You know, I mean, so I we, totally we need agree. to <laughs> we need to understand. And most people want to know, oh, they want to ask all these questions and getting get into the details. Well, how is this going to work and how is that going to work, right? But you're giving validity to the system that's in place now. Like explain a system better than what we have now and you're giving validity to slavery, violence, and duress. Right. So we need to understand that um, this is what human beings do. We need to discuss and use our logic and re- reason. And there's a lot of things that we're not going to have the answers for. And we're going to have to figure out like adults, right? Like I grown agree. spiritual human beings. And we're going to figure this out that the path forward in harmony with nature, truth, and freedom, right? Is untold. And we're going to have to walk that path. And this is where the fear of freedom comes in. People think about the unknown and they get scared. It it uh, cre- creates a reaction, the fight or flight, mm-hmm. and that unknown is so scary for them. They would rather just stay in the slave bubble, right? Because they have their Netflix and their you know their Amazon packages with the the little smiley faces being delivered to them. So they're they're content. Comfort is stagnation. Comfort is death. That's so right? true. That's so, so true. When we talk about borders, right? These imaginary lines. This is a concept made up by human beings that does not exist in truth, in nature, in the natural world, right? So no, this should not exist. But, you know, I mean, this opens up for all these different 
you know, points of discussion mm -hmm. and, you know, some are valid, but we need to get down to the foundational level and, and understand that this is going to be a multiple generation endeavor, but we I'm must do that. it because it is the right thing. The path hum uh, humanity is walking right now in opposition to nature to truth will lead to destruction. This has happened, you know, many times in in the 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 known history. We call them global catastrophes, right? The flood, all this kind of stuff. Um so I do believe nature herself, this planet is alive, is a living consciousness and we are interconnected with the the planet and everything um, in in nature, right? So there's going to be you can look at it as an immune response, meaning humanity. We are the stewards of this planet. We are if we are in opposition to nature, there will be a immune response, and nature will shake us off like fleas. I totally agree. I say that all the time. Will you've made so many great points and. Thank you. I want. I'm glad I got to ask you that because you made great points there, and and I agree with you. I people seem to think that what we're talking about is taking out government in just one mass swoop. That there's no government, and I keep trying to tell people this is a generation. This is going to take time. It's going to take effort from everybody, and it's a generational uh, learning. That's why I think it's really important to get to the young children as well and start teaching them this because. Uh, the older generation, a lot of them are open to it, but a lot of them are really stuck in their ways and they're very, they're going to be a little bit uh, harder stone to break. But I think if we can get to the younger minds and they're way more open to what we're talking about and willing to, to work with it, I think that's a great thing. But I, I definitely know that I've talked to people and they think that that's what we mean is that we're just going to pull government out in a day. And I'm just like, in yeah. reality, that'll never happen. It just, it just, life doesn't work that way. So it's, it's a yep. process and I, I agree with what you're saying and you make sense on the borders. I think they keep us, that's another thing that they just keep us arguing about this endless exactly. debating and, and arguing back and forth and that, and that's what they want. Well, a, a lot of the, the, the violence and the actual real chaos is, uh, the reason we have this is due to government codes and mm -hmm. regulations, right? The reason there's a, a huge problem at the border is because there are actually people there restricting other human beings and violating other human beings, right? I mean, so it, it's same thing as with parenting. If you control and restrict your ch teenage child, guess what? That ch that teenage child is going to lie to you, mm -hmm. is going to rebel, is is going to you know rage against the dying of the light, yep. so to say, right? Because it's being restricted, it's being violated. So we can look at, you know, the black market as well. And uh, with, you know, all types of drugs and all this type of stuff where government is trying to regulate and control other people's uh, decision makings, uh, making of their own body, right? And this creates a, uh, a situation where there, that is actually violent. Right. So a lot of this stuff is manufactured due to the belief in human authority. Makes so we sense. need to we need to get down, right? We need to think about like there is no collective. A co collective and aggregate is a descriptive word of individuals. So when we use this term, it comes down to what are you doing? Because the individuals comprise the aggregate. So it's, this is an individual um, uh, process that we each must go through. And what we're talking about is getting down to principles first things first what is the principles that we must live by what are the principles of reality um and and this is where the the cause is the root of the problem i totally agree well said and so and because we're talking about rights i think this blends perfectly into my next point that i want to get into you with will and this is one i've had great debates with and and it's it's going to sound funny but I'm hoping people are going to take the ride with us and, and kind of understand where I'm going with this. And maybe you can break it down. But we're talking about rights, which most people would agree. And we we know is that is an action that does not cause harm to another sentient being. Now, my question has always been, and the discussions I've had, Will, is do people have the right to harm themselves if they're going by the natural law principle and, and by your rights? Yeah, great question. So as you know, human beings, we have the the benefit of using logic and reason, and and we have you know we have care, we have the heart space, the first eye, you have the third eye, you have two to to look, one to see, one to feel, 
so we use this this trinity to um, to evolve, right? To figure this out. So we need to understand morality and ethics. And we also need to understand that this is, you know, it's ultimately a gradient. We have morality, which is objective. These are the principles by which you cannot violate across the board. It's objective, meaning it applies to all human beings. This is the foundation, right? The foundation of, of this concept in objective morality, right? It, do not uh, initiate or aggress upon other beings. Right objective but as we move up into you know the topics it starts to get into uh, a gradient of ethics right ethics is if morality is what you can't do ethics is what you shouldn't do right, uh, right. so we must understand ownership ownership means you control the usage uh you are in possession of it and you facilitate its decisions. So do I own myself? Well, I possess this body. No one else is coming in and, you know, I'm not swapping bodies right. with other people, right? The body is a vessel, right? So I have ownership of this body. I possess it. I control its usage. I make the decisions to wave my arm up and down, to have an interview with Rick. So I am in ownership of this body. Mm -hmm. So I am responsible for it. So the actions that I perform, I am absolutely uh, responsible and, and accountable for that. Now, do I have the right to harm myself? Absolutely. I do. Should I do that? No, it would not be ethical for me to harm myself, Makes but does, does the right, does the right remain? Yes, it does. Right. We have the free will choice to harm ourselves but it is not wise and it's not ethical and there will be repercussions cause and effect. Natural law is always in play. Nothing is above the law. Meaning if I decide to eat crappy, right? Mm -hmm. There's going to be an effect of that, Absolutely. but I'm, I'm making that choice. Now we need to understand that, you know, if I'm going to not be wise, be ignorant or, or be careless, on my choices and my my actions and my behaviors then yes it might it might the effect might affect another human being mm -hmm. if i if i drink alcohol and get into a car and drive that's my choice my free will choice if i hit someone and kill another person i am responsible for that so we need to understand that we exist in this reality field. We are going to interact with the world. We are an, we are accountable and responsible for our actions. It makes total sense. I, I totally understand what you're saying. And but yeah, it's just I, I think maybe somebody might think if that was a kind of a weird question, but it's it's honestly a topic will that I talk a lot about um, because I, I just have people saying like, OK, so I'm with you on the rights and that. But now how does that kind of translate to one's own body? And I think you break that down really well. I just and it's really weird because of me being a tattoo artist, I'm sitting there thinking like, am I causing harm to somebody? Because I am technically harming them when I'm tattooing them. I'm working on it with a needle on them and I, but I, and I know it sounds crazy, but I do, I think about this so much. Like, am I actually doing a harm? And, but I just think it comes down to like, I'm technically not because they're willing, <laughs> like they're kind of willing to go under the, the needle, so to say. Well, you, you are using force, right? Yeah. You're using energy and you are, you, you, by that action, you're inflicting pain, right. but it is not violence. Violence is derived from violation, violation ah, of what violation of a natural right. Right. So you can look at um, cage fighting UFC, right? Is this a is this a violent sport? No, it is not because they are both both people are consenting. Now, is it a forceful and a painful sport? Yes, it is. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Same with boxing and football. But the key to understand is consent. See, this is what government does. Government says, oh, because you human beings are so stupid and ignorant, 
uh, we dictate what you can do to your body. Mm -hmm. So you do not have ownership of your body. We say what you can do and cannot do with your body. Right. That's exactly so right. So that, so when someone says, you know, do you have a, do you have a right to harm yourself? Absolutely. You do. This is what, this is the whole premise of government. Government says that, you know, you can't. And in fact, in some cases, if you, you know, if you take, if you choose the unwise decision of, um, of killing yourself, suicide, right. Mm -hmm. Um, and you, you attempt that and you do not succeed, government can press charges upon you. I've heard I, that, I've right? known someone that actually uh, went to psychiatric award and then, and then did jail time. Can you imagine that, what I just said? That's government saying, you tried to damage our property, so now we're going to punish you. Wow. It's, it's incredible. I it mean, is. just think about it. We have social security numbers, right? These are just dog tags, ear tags, like cattle on a, on a farm. Right. It's barcodes. So, so really, they look at us just as property. The they look at that... us as their property. property. Wow. So, so true. Well, I'm glad, yeah, just, I'm glad I kind of brought that up because I just, if people knew the amount of time I spent thinking about just, like I said, tattooing, and if I'm really doing something wrong by doing, and I know people are going, that's crazy to think that much about it, but I really do think about it. And I'm glad you kind of cleared that up because it makes total sense. There's a big difference between consenting and then doing violence to somebody. That, that's a absolutely that's huge. <laughs> Yeah, there's no violation there. Someone comes into your your you know your tattoo shop mm -hmm. and they consent. They say do this and absolutely right. And now as human beings, right, with logic and reason and discernment, if someone says you know oh I want um I want a huge penis right across my forehead down my cheek. Now you as a <laughs> right. you know a professional mm -hmm. and this is where ethics get involved. You might have a conversation with like, you know, are you sure you want to do that? Like this is permanent. Um, and you might, <laughs> and you might evaluate right. their psychological capacity. You know, they might not be all there. They might have some issues. So by you discerning, um, this, this potential contract, this agreement, then you might decline that, that offer. Exactly. You might say, no, I'm not going to do that. You I know? have I'm... done that. I've said no to many things, tattooing. I'm just like, I won't do it. I'm like, go somewhere else. And then they'll be, oh, well, this guy said down the road he'd do it. I'm like, then go to him because I won't. Exactly. I just won't do certain things. So, yeah, that's great. Well, and great points you're making. I'm, I'm really enjoying this. I learned so much from you. And I want to, now that because we're talking about uh, people's rights and their bodies, this is a topic that I know has been sensitive for a lot of people, but I want to get into it, and that is abortion because this is a topic that a lot of people I hear going back and forth on. And I think this is, we have to have this conversation. Does a woman yeah. at any point, cause it's her body have the right to do an abortion. I just want your thoughts on that. Well, you know, what is abortion? This is a, this is a hot button topic. Yes. This is, you know, an important topic. And I absolutely, I'm, I'm willing to discuss this because it is, is important. So what is abortion? Well, <laughs> you are aborting a baby. You are aborting a fetus. You are aborting a human being. Doesn't matter what stage it is. You. So you say any stage, any. A any stage does okay. not matter. Matter any stage because before conception, you are one being, mm -hmm. right? Then after conception, now you will have a second being that's in the process of growing inside you. Right. So it's no longer just your body. Now, we talked about natural rights. What is a right? A right is any action that does not cause harm to another being. So when, when we see these signs and these people saying abortion is a human right, is it? It is a right to abort, to kill another being, a growing being inside you? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, it is not a right whatsoever. Now, people get emotional. Absolutely. Yes. You know, I'm sure there might be listeners right now just furious by what I just said. Now, we need to understand we live in a reality. This is like this is like a, a university, right? A university where we are here to grow and learn lessons. There's no guaranteed safety. You know, we're not here in a bubble where everything's going to be perfect. It does not exist. So when people bring up topics like, well, what about if a woman was raped? Horrible horrible, right? It's an abomination. Mm -hmm. 
rape is. Yep. So it's 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 one of the the most violating transgressions one can take upon. But you know, bad things are going to happen, and ultimately, the woman can still make that choice. She does not have the right to do that, but she still can exercise her free will choice to do that. There will be repercussions with that. And I'm saying this from a very personal experience because I myself, um, with my, my daughter's mother now, we had before my daughter, we did have an abortion. This was many years ago before I had awareness. And let me tell you something. It had profound negative effects on myself, my spirit, my soul, my psychological and my emotional stability. It had even more detrimental effects on uh, on her d- going through that process. Now that's because she, she's very in tuned with you know empathy with herself and and with with nature, and it it was a, a regretful decision that we did. Right, we were young, and just like many people. Many people that go and get abortions, oh, they're just not ready for it. Right. Well, guess what? <laughs> you are you are a child, right? We need to be adults. We are going to make decisions, and then we have to live with those consequences. Very true. So that was a, a huge um, staple learning experience for for me and for her. And we need to understand that uh, you know abortion uh, is has been manufactured. Meaning the concept of abortion, Planned Parenthood, you know, um, Margaret Sanger. These are all this is all from the social engineers, even birth control as well has detrimental consequences on the body That's as well. Yep. So what does that mean? Right. Oh, well, we you know, especially the, the young people. Right. Well, we got to have sex. You know, we, we got to fulfill those base desires, mm-hmm. um, the lower consciousness um, beast within us. Well, Hey, there's going to be consequences for that. So we need to understand a lot of things. We need to understand rights. We need to understand where abortion comes from and how, why it is, how it's been manufactured and pushed upon culture and, uh, and pushed upon women. And we need to understand the, the sexual union, that this is a divine process. This is not something, uh, a feel-good fix, a dopamine rush that we just need to um, interact with. We need to understand that this is a, a sacred union, and it is, it is there for unifying masculine and feminine, male and woman, to create the vessel of a soul or for, you know, for another being. I mean, this is... This is the, the one of the most sacred processes that that we have in this reality. Yeah. And so they, there, there's a it. lot of there's a lot of uh, ignorance around Absolutely. this whole topic. And and they've and to me they've cheapened relationships. They've made it that base desire just by the way they steer. I think of like the dating apps, and I and I know people that are single, and they are part of the whole dating app thing, and it, it's just so so weak i don't i don't know the word for it it's just so hollow i guess and and soulless you know yes. you're just meeting people and then usually you you meet them and hook up with them right away that seems to be the way they go and then i see the way that, that they're just portraying sex even when i do catch the odd tv show and i see how rampant porn is now like i like would do some research guys on like the the addiction rate for porn it staggered me when i when i saw it and i'm just thinking mm-hmm. like they are really uh, will they're divide? They're taking that away. They're making it something. That they're twisting it like they always do. Yes, that, exactly. That, that connection between man and woman and having a child. They've just and then as we're saying with this whole abortion thing, and then you got into a good point with birth control. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think and then God, I was gonna. There, there was a great point I was gonna make. It'll come back to me. But let me say something real quick yeah, uh, uh, about about what you were saying. Yeah. Um. We need to understand that like this topic of abortion and birth control and all this stuff, it's it's derived again. It's a lack of knowledge from principles. So we need to understand that uh, in a in a free society or in a society that has higher awareness of principles, meaning self-ownership, that we are responsible for ourselves and our actions, Mm non-aggression, meaning you owe everything one thing, do not initiate harm and 
the third, which is self-defense, meaning you yourself have the right to defend yourself and you have the obligation and responsibility to defend yourself by all means. When this awareness of first principles increases in the world, in society, we are going to see a drop in rape, in assault, in murder, mm -hmm. because th the more people understand self-defense, right, then it's when we look at some of these um, you, uh, American states like Texas, where the right to bear arms, the bear arms is a natural right where the majority of people are walking around with guns. Well, guess yeah. what? This is why this state has the lowest crime and the lowest um, gun violations uh, in America, right? Because everyone's packing heat. Everyone <laughs> understands self-defense. So same thing with rape and murder and sexual assault and all this kind of stuff. So again, it comes down to self-knowledge, understanding principles and understanding oneself and truth and how the natural world truly operates. Very good points. Yeah, and you're right too about people that can bear arms and you make, and the point I was going to make, well, too, I'm glad it just sparked on me is that I'm, we were talking about like the whole abortion birth control. And I always wonder even going back to say two or 300 years, just say like what they would think about that now. Like if we, if they knew back then, like they're going to be doing what they're just going to, it's going to be go to a clinic and get this done. And there's no, I just think about that. Like what they would think, like, mm, it's yeah. like, wow. And yeah, we have to understand spe this is speeding up, you know, Absolutely, and another good, a yeah. good topic I'll touch on because you mentioned, you know, porn uh, mm -hmm. and, you know, speed dating and all this kind of stuff um, is the war on testosterone for men since 1970 to now testosterone has dropped 2.6 percent each year. That's huge. <laughs> each year. And there's some really good studies, you know, just take it as available information. There's some really good studies out there that really dive deep into this. Um, so testosterone is vital for men and women, right? Of course, men have more testosterone, right? And, and this is the, testosterone is what makes a man, a man, right? I mean, uh, it, 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 it sparks the body in utero to develop the penis and the, and the testicles, mm -hmm. right? So this is willpower. So we see with, you know, the, the society that we're living in with all the chemicals and the plastics and porn and all this kind of stuff, it's lowering testosterone and, and, and a lot of men to zero. Now that doesn't mean that it's gone forever. You can, you can rebuild it. Um, and that, that is a process. But when you have lack of testosterone in a male, what do you have? You have a feminized man. Right. Absolutely. And then that was good. That's, that's great that you said that because I was going to say that and kind of ask you like what their agenda is to lowering the testosterone. But you kind of answered it. They, they don't want strong men. They want to weaken the, the whole male spirit. Absolutely. And this is why um, sperm count is at a incredible low amount. And even women too, right? With the chemicals, the plastics, um, EMFs, uh, birth control, right? This is messing up the the hormonal um, stability, and you know, making a lot of women infertile, right? So we have low sperm count and and um, infertile eggs in women. So what does that mean? It means nowadays in the modern world, people are having a hard time getting pregnant. So this gets into a whole depopulation agenda that's that's self-induced that we are doing to ourselves through lack of awareness. Wow. It, it, it's it's really when you break it down like that, it's like we are we really got some work to do and some hurdles because they, they're I always say that there's not a simple answer because they're coming at it from so many different angles. Like they're really getting us on so many they're They've covered their bases. That's for sure. And I think about like what you're saying, like, you know, they just we really need to step up our game. I mean, we're just, I just yeah. see where we're going. And I, and I talk to people, I try to get out and talk to people well as much as I can in person, because I do think you engage at things better. And then you can get, and I just saw people around the neighborhood and that I, through discussions over time, you kind of get a feel for where they're at. And I just, just don't see people talking about these things, at least not around me. I mean, like the people I just run into and we kind of get a discussion going, they're really part of the system. And I just, I just, I, it's a tough one. 
yeah, a lot of people are not going to get it in this lifetime, right? Wow. And and that that is unfortunate. But this is what we're here to do. We're here to inspire people mm -hmm. um, to to spark that change within their own lives. And we can talk about. And you're right, Rick. Right, our whole system, hu humans, right, are living in opposition to nature, meaning every facet of society is inverted. Mm -hmm. It goes against nature and what and what actually should be happening. So we got the, the you know upside down world. It's topsy turvy. So this can be extremely depressing and hard for a lot of people to take in all this information on all these topics, geoengineering, um, um, you know, the, the war on testosterone, all this kind of stuff. Right. But one thing that I tell people to do is like, it's good to have an awareness, but at some time, at some point you have to act and where th the best place to start is within yourself. Right. So start what, what you can control within your own life, your diet, what um, your awareness on what you consume and put into your body, your belief systems. What are your belief systems and why? And, you know, you're uh, paying attention to your emotions, the energy and motion that you're feeling on a day to day basis. Journal these down even. Right. So bring in that focus from the infinite the infinite realm of information that's always coming at us, doesn't matter if it's alternative or mainstream, right? And bringing it down to definition, to the finite, to higher clarity, to a single point, and that is with yourself, your psyche, your emotions, your body, your actions, and start there. A great place to start is, is diet, what you're putting into your body, because if the vessel, right, the receiver, our body is in an imbalanced state, that's going to affect our capacity to reason and logic and discern. So I it's agree. a really good place to start. Principles, right? Yeah. Air, air, water, food. What are you putting into your body? Start there. Mm -hmm. Sun, grounding, you know, touching the earth, the dirt. Start with those principles and then work your way up. That's a great point. And, and I've always told people, too, you have to be very willing and open to tearing down f your belief systems, too, that you've clung on to. Because I think a lot of people get in, like, they think, of, you know, they, they grasp onto something so tightly and then they, they just start fighting for it because they're so uh, they're so involved in it. And I'm always willing to tear anything down if it if it if it better information comes along or it's a false belief or any. I really doing that through shadow work. I've learned that. That I, you know, I have a question like, where do I even get some of these beliefs? Like, where, where, why do I believe what I do? Where did this come from? And a lot of it is been stuck there somehow. And like, it's like a Trojan Absolutely. horse <laughs> that they put in there. Great point. Yeah, great analogy. It's like a Trojan horse. Most of our belief systems have been given to us in the formative stages of our childhood, mm -hmm. or you know, we've picked up along the way, uh, most of the time from culture. Right. So um, absolutely, we need to ask ourselves these questions for sure. You know, why do I hold the beliefs that I do? Um, and it, it's very reactive for people. And, you know, we need to pay attention to those triggers. Yeah, absolutely. That's great points. And so, yeah, moving along, like I, I, this is so important, these topics that we're covering, Will. So I thank you once again, because I really do appreciate you coming on and, and covering these and having this discussion. I'll keep saying it, it needs to happen. And another, because we've covered abortion and we really got, you could put some great information out there. I hope it makes people really think about it. And another one that's big right now, and it, and I it's happening in people in my life, is the whole transgender movement and we're hearing a lot about children younger and younger and younger wanting to transition you hear um parents that are pushing for this and encouraging their young children and th i know this is going to be a big topic and it's not a simple topic it's a hard topic to have or a hard discussion i should say to have and but i want to do have it with you because as i was uh, saying i was telling you a little bit off air that uh, i have friends that this is affecting a couple of friends that this is affecting their family and they have young a uh, young child and it's it's affecting them and it's mm -hmm. actually uh it's really disturbing to see and i just want to get your thoughts on this because or where we can start to have this discussion i just want to get your thoughts on this whole because it's a big thing going on right now with this whole trans topic and people talking about it. a lot of people are uncomfortable talking about it they don't even want to have the discussion i do because i think it's important 
Yeah. Yeah. Huge, huge topic and very relevant nowadays. Uh, and it is a, you know, it's a disgusting, horrible psyop. This is a psychological operation that's moving full steam ahead. Right. So let me start with some caveats. Your sexual preference, meaning if you're gay, bisexual, lesbian, that doesn't matter to me. Right. That that Same. is your that is your choice. Now, of course, when you get into, you know, uh, you know, age, meaning that you're attracted to a child, that's a that's a huge problem. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is this is getting into mental illness and, um, you, you know, disassociated from reality, from truth, from nature. So and then so sexual preference is one thing, you know, do what you like. That's that's your choice. But then when you get into um, thinking that you were born in the wrong body or you want to mutilate yourself, have a sex change, right? This is also men mental illness. Now, this is hard for a lot of people to understand, but you are, you're again, disassociated from, from truth, from reality, right? A man is a man, a woman is a woman. And honestly, without going off the rails, it's extremely disrespectful and offensive for a man to think he could throw the costume on and call it a call it a woman right women are divine creatures men are divine beings as well we are complementary to each other we must be honest with ourselves right i was born a man so this is who i am now with that being said that's objective in the natural world. Right. We understand this. There are only two genders. This is how you create a child, a man and a woman, period, right? Well, until they start growing uh, children in labs. And even then, even then, you still need the male and the, the woman. And the female, yep. Hopefully, we don't go down that route. But um, so we need to understand kind of why this is happening. And this is a great segue into what we were just talking about with testosterone. And I'll, I'm gonna, I'll say this for someone and people can do their research because there are studies out there as well. So when a, first of all, um, the condition that a man is in and the condition that a woman is in, meaning physically and spiritually, right? When they conceive has an impact on the, the vessel that is going to be created. Now, during utero, utero, right, when the, the woman is, is pregnant and the child is growing inside, that is a crucial time for whatever the woman is being affected by, putting into her body, surrounded by, etc. This is going to affect the, the child. Now, check this out, Rick, and their, their studies. I'll, actually, I'll send you the links and you okay, can perfect. put the studies in the description, okay. right? Um, so be because of phthalates, phthalates is plastic. This is the byproduct of petroleum, of oil, mm -hmm. right? So when someone gets, uh, and phthalates, it, it's an important component to plastic. It pretty much is what makes plastic either hard or soft. And that would, you know, that varies in degrees if it's a soft water bottle or if it's a hard, uh, piece of plastic. And, you know, people think that they're doing the healthy choice by grabbing something that says BPA free, but all that BPA, the BPA is taken out and it's replaced with a more harmful um, molecule, which is BPS and BPF, which are the harmful cousins okay. of BPA, right? But you need these phthalates in the plastic. That's what makes it plastic. Now think about it. Plastic is everywhere. Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> everywhere. Right. So, yep. I mean, and, and water bottles, right? The plastic leaches into the water, um, our food, everything. Now, there's studies showing and proving that when a woman uh, is in utero with a fetus is growing and she takes in a high content of phthalates, right? The phthalates is a endocrine system disruptor. So it blocks it binds to the endocrine system when the fetus is growing. 
And what does the endocrine system do? It it actually uh, starts producing testosterone um, or even estrogen, right? So this dictates if the fetus is going to grow a penis or a vagina. So this blocks those receptors. And we know, and we know that when testosterone is low, a, a man becomes feminine. And even a woman can be, um, you know, uh, have instability in, in emotions as well, mm-hmm. right? So you, it blocks, you know, estrogen and m- there's an imbalance of testosterone. Now, they have proven this in these studies because, and this, this is going to be wild, but I highly recommend people look into this information, that they can measure the distance between the anus and the genitals, and in women, it's it's a lot smaller, and in men, it's a lot bigger. So what they found that when these babies are born, and the babies that have a small, uh, that the area is smaller, they are more feminine, right? Interesting. So it it there. So there. What I'm, my point is is that there's a chemical component to this. This this war of chemicals that is being bombarded to us, where you know, when women are in, in utero and the baby is growing and they're just taking all these harmful substances into their body, it's having an effect on the fetus itself. So there is an imbalance in, in the fetus as it's growing, the the penis will be smaller as well. Even in grown men, if your testosterone drops, your testicles and your penis Mm -hmm. shrink as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, this is really important, but here's the kicker in grown men. If your testosterone drops to zero, you can you can raise it into normal levels in about f- around four months, right? You know, with with willpower and care. Okay. With a child in utero, it's fixed. Meaning during that developmental stage, if the harm the harm has been done, there's no reversing it, right? To I mean to to our knowledge and and what these studies are saying. So this is a an important chemical imbalance that has a physical effect on the vessel, right? And and the imbalance of of the the growing human being. So when we look at the transgender movement that is being pushed and promoted and propagated uh, all upon culture, right? And you see these little children. Now uh, now think about this. Even not young boys, young boys. Uh, they they are slightly feminine because the, the testosterone hasn't started pumping in production until they get to puberty. Right. Now right. they have tes- testosterone is in there. This is what is responsible for um, for creating you know the, the penis and the testicles. Mm-hmm. But when when parents see a young boy playing with dolls or something or acting a little more feminine, there's there's a couple components, right? There could be that chemical component and or the physiological component of just how they developed in utero, but also understand that they haven't reached puberty yet. So yeah. the testosterone isn't there that really makes them more masculine. And the psyop is that just because your child, you know, might be acting feminine, oh, they they can choose if they are a boy or a girl, or they are definitely a uh, a female in a boy body, right? I yeah. mean, this is this is this is crazy, right? This is a disassociation from reality, and parents, <coughs> excuse me, should be ashamed of themselves, knowing that their young children do not have the capacity for logic and reason and discernment. And the parents are taking advantage of their children by saying, oh, little, little Johnny, little Melissa, are you a boy or are you a girl? This is mind control. This is manipulation. And it's a complete violation of rights as well. The right to grow into development and, and to um, evolve and for development. As parents, we do not own our children. We are stewardships. That's so we are facilitators for, <laughs> for, for, for these children. Yeah. And we need to understand that we are responsible for them. And we are there to aid them through their developmental process until, they're, until they are sustainable, right? Yeah. Until they have the capacity. That's a tough one, to, Will, to for reason. parents to hear, right? Like they, you don't yeah. own your kids. Like you're a steward of them. I remember, like, I remember 
God, like I just remember hearing that so long ago and it just, I don't think people think of it that way. Like I, cause I remember, you know, I definitely think my parents, when they were raising me, they thought they owned me. <laughs> like that was just their mindset, I think. But I think that's yeah. a tough one for parents to hear, but it, because it's really, that, that changes the game when you say it that way, the way that you did. It puts more responsibility even on the parents, I think, because you're, you're, you're the steward of, of them learning and growing. And, and that's a, that's huge. That's such a big undertaking. It is. Yeah. And the psychological operation of, you know, promoting this and normalizing this is, uh, it, it's incredible. It's full steam, right? Because, Hey, if you haven't, if you haven't been down this rabbit hole, right? Children are the most valuable resource mm -hmm. to life on this planet, to the human species. And it's also the most valuable resource to the social engineers. The social engineers feed off this energy of, of the innocence, the child. They are closer to source, pure, right? So they, um, the succubi. Uh, uh, energy of feeding the louche, which is the life force energy off these children. So, you know, putting the um, the the transgender uh, ideology into young schools is just programming and conditioning. Right. And I'll say this, you know, normal, uh, normal adults do not get angry that they can't talk to their children about sex. Right. Predators and perverts do. So you see all these people up in arms that, oh, you know, these the LGBTQT movement and um, and all these other transgender movements and, and these and the ideologies uh, of this psychological operation getting upset that they can't have drag queen story time in in pre or elementary schools and middle schools and this kind of stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. They get upset about that. Why? Why are you so upset? Why do you need to talk about, you know, sex? And 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 all this um, false information to children and parents are just eating this up. So parents are under mind control. And this is this is another reason why aware parents, conscious parenting is needed. And it's not about changing the system. It's about detaching from the system, meaning that you have the responsibility to say, no, I'm not going to expose my child to that. Pull your kids out of school. Stop going down to the school board meetings and saying, you know, I, I want you to change it. Do it this way. Do it this way. It's not going to change. This is by design. The system is operating exactly as it should be. Right. Right. So we need to take we need to have that courage and willpower to remove our children from these systems. I, I totally agree. That's what I say to people, too. You have to be willing to say no and then take action and pull them out of the system. If that's the, the and I, you make a great point. Well, I've said I've said it so many times on my show that the system is working perfect. They're not going to change it. This is what they this is the results they want. So why they're not going to change it. You can I'll go up in arms all you want. It's not that's not going to make a difference. You have to actually take action, like you said, and pull your children out of school and um, as I was saying, like, I, I just, this transgender one is a big one. I, I really, only because it's, uh, I, it's affecting people around me. And I know that there's an agenda going on because it's in, and it's definitely, they're targeting the young children. They, they just are. And that's where I had the problem. I was saying to you off air that, listen, if you're a grown adult and you're living your life and you've, you know, you're fully mature and you want to be transgender you want to be gay like you were saying do hey do what you want i mean that's your right to do that I'm, i have no problem with that i am not transphobic don't please don't label me that way or that is not what i am at all i have a problem when they start gearing it towards the kids who are innocent and they their their minds are so fertile then and i and so i've mm -hmm. seen it happen and people around my, as I was saying earlier, around me, this is happening with their children. Now, now you know, I have a, a couple of friends that their sons are coming home and they want to now dress like women. They think they want to go on hormones. And, and then now they're, they have friends that are transgender in the schooling system. And the parents were telling me that this wasn't a problem until they started getting into the school system and then around other people. And this is, so there's some type of programming definitely going on. Yes. That we have to talk about. And, and and I like the way that you kind of brought up too. Well, I know I'm kind of hitting you with a lot here, but you were bringing up the, the chemicals with the uh, with the fetuses and with these plastics and that. And that was kind of cool because I was going to ask you about that. I've been doing a little bit of research and they are, people are studying, if you look at the scientific papers, and they're saying that there is certain things going on in the brain that are making people feel like they're in the wrong body. 
And so you kind of address that in a way. Uh, I think you've touched on it with these chemicals because that's kind of an argument that people are saying. And so that that's the research has kind of led to me is that there is people saying that there it's not just a it's it, there's something definitely something chemically that makes people feel they're in the wrong bodies or the wrong gender. Uh, so it's just a interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's a factor. It's not the sole factor, right? But we we need to understand, you know, it's um it always it always starts in the mind. Right. But again, if you inhibit or you modify the vessel, that's going to have an effect on the you know the receiver of information, the the brain for for the mind. Mm -hmm. So it definitely plays an impact, you know. And it's it's not just plastics that have this effect. It is pesticides, herbicides. It's all the, the phthalates that they put in scented candles, you know, you have the, the air wick, mm -hmm. um, the air wick freshener, scent freshener that people plug into the wall, right? Most of these candles are, are just toxic fumes that are being put into the air. So it's a combination of things. And um, we need to understand that this is also a, a, um, a eugenics operation. Um, that they're trying to condition and program the mind because the mind is, is sets the tempo for, for everything. So culture operates right through the public school system, right? Yep. This, Absolutely. this is where, like you were saying, your friends, you know, they, their kids come home from school and now they, they have all these ideologies and they want to do all these things. Yep. That's because they're spending seven hours a day five days a week in public school where public school is just promoting the social en engineers agendas. And again, it can differ in different, you know, locations as well, but we have to understand these dialectics are there. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you got the woke, you got the left side, right. The neoliberalism, um, going off, but this also sparks the far, um, ideology of the right, you know, the Republicans and all this kind of stuff. And they're both, they're both fueling each other and they're both wanting more government control. Their solution is government. And in reality, we need to get down to the, the fundamental understanding that the belief in human authority is illegitimate and invalid. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a, it's a definitely a, a, a touchy subject. And I'm glad we're having this discussion. And just to make a point, I was what was kind of interesting, Will, is I was listening to a story and somebody um, was parents were talking about their child that was in the school system, came home and similar to the story I was telling you about my friends, their son wanted thought he might be a woman and or, a, you know, he thinks that that's where he might be headed. And he thinks he um, so he wanted to get hormones and transition the parents from what they said, pulled the child out of school, moved to, they moved to a different location. They kind of went out to the outskirts of the city. They went kind of like country living. And the story, from what the story they're saying is that within like three or four weeks, the child was right back to normal being a boy, had no, didn't, they, they had no idea that they, like, they, that was kind of like it never happened. They had no, they weren't talking about being a female again. So it was kind yeah. of interesting to me that you pull them out of that environment and things kind of go back to the way they should, if that's a, if that absolutely, makes, yeah. yeah, no, absolutely. You know why? Why does uh, the the transgender, the gender fluidity, what this movement? Why does it focus on elementary school? That's the yes. range. That's because these children are in the formative stage, the formatting stage, meaning they are a sponge. Mm -hmm. This is laying the foundation for your operating system on how. The being's going to think, their belief systems, all of this stuff. This is why they're they're targeting these young children. So it's, it makes sense. It runs deep, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, I if if I'm a parent as well, right? Mm -hmm. So we homeschool. Actually, we unschool. I call it unschool. We it's self directed learning. But any parent, do not put your kid in school from any age up to ten years old. The formative years is zero through seven to eight, mm -hmm. all the way up to 10. And then, then if you want to maybe do some type of charter school or, you know, group organizing, you know, um, schooling or something like that, then maybe that's an option. Ultimately, self-directed learning is definitely the way to go. And people can do their research and watch my videos on that as well. Right. So yeah, no, it, it's a powerful, it's a powerful, um, topic that needs to be discussed and ultimately it comes down to the parents right what what are you going to do as a parent
right? No, so that makes total sense. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because, and that's what I try to like. We've and we've done it. I've done interviews with you where we talk about this that parents need to get more involved in their child's lives. And and I see it even with friends that have children. They basically they really don't have a lot of time with their kids. And and and, and it's designed that way. I absolutely agree. They the, they've engineered it like this. Because you see parents now, like, both usually are having to work. They're both out of the house. So they're sending their children to, you know, to daycare. They have a babysitter. They're both working. So you maybe have an hour or two in the morning if you're lucky, and then maybe an hour or two at night. And then the rest of the time, they're being, they're, they're being raised by somebody else. And I they're, just... being raised, they're being raised by government, the state, and culture. They're being raised by the social engineers, programming conditioned to be slaves, right? And it's... It's a it's generational mind control and it, it, it is brutal and real quick before I forget you could put this in the description when I was talking about the studies on the phthalates um, in in utero utero and have the effects that, that um, so the study that it was ran by Dr. Uh, Shauna H. Swan. Okay. She's got some really good videos and you can check out all the studies on that as well. Now, you know, she. It's great for gathering the information. Look at the studies, you know, um, but she just doesn't have the, that awareness that this is being orchestrated and manufactured. So she's coming more of it as a mainstream um, uh, for, you know, awareness for humanity. I mean, we can see that um, this is this is part of the de depopulation agenda, because if you have men and women that think they're in the wrong body, right, then they're most yeah. likely not going to have kids or they're, uh, you know, adopt kids. Uh, which is being promoted as well, Absolutely. and that's that just yeah. that just makes the the ideology be propagated down for with with the programming. So, wow, very important, very important topics. It, it's a it is it's, and I'm glad we're having this discussion. It's it's so important because it, it's affecting in so many areas, and I it's an uncomfortable one too because I like I mean I you start looking in the studies. Will like I've been really trying to stay in the middle on this. I don't want to fall prey to something you know like fall prey to grabbing onto something and saying this is my belief and so i want to stay in the middle and i and i and i'm I, you know you hear people say like this is kind of leading back to where i was saying that they're kind of looking at it chemically in the brain like so this was the whole argument was are people born uh gay or are they born transgender is this something that is you know happens in nature or is it something that is happening after you know after the fact and that's kind of like so somebody was making the argument that this does it's a it's not just a, a a social thing or it's not something that people just learn it's something that could be happening in the brain and that's kind of where the studies are that i'm looking at that they're kind of trying to prove that so i want to see both sides of this i don't i think that's where you know the best way to approach it absolutely yeah the these topics were you know practically unheard of uh you know 30 oh, 40 God, years yeah. ago yeah. it's like yeah. it's it's so we, we we see where this is going it's going and it's picking up speed into the transhumanistic agenda, ultimately, right? I mean, mm -hmm. really, there's there's one agenda for the so social engineers, and that's to control human beings in the totality, 100%. Yep. So they invert nature, or they they propagate the illusion, right? Because you cannot actually invert nature. Nature is perfect order, but human beings, what they have come to what they believe is inverted to how things truly operate in the natural world. Absolutely. So, so that, it's the agenda against nature. It, it totally is. And people are so disconnected from, from nature these days. It's just, it's, it's crazy. And I try to tell people at least get out in nature somehow. Like, I mean, just get out there and start connecting and you're, it will change your life. It really did for me. Uh, I was living in a city for many, many, like 20 years. I lived at 25 years, actually. I lived in a in an apartment building, and I was just part in the city. And then when I got away from the city and started actually getting out in nature and being around nature, it changes you. And I try to tell people the power of that, uh, of connecting, and they, they keep trying to sever that connection. And you're so right with the transhumanism movement. They, they want us, that connection broken, and they're doing a great job, I think. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, they un yeah, unfortunately they are, right? And this one. is the, the this is the this the stress on children cuz children are pure potential. Right? Mm -hmm. So if you can control that, right? Then you are you are advancing your will. 
And this is what the social engineers do. And, you know, but this is what the social engineers, what they propagate. Ultimately, it's the individual. So it's not it's not some external force putting your kids in public school. You are putting your kids in public school. So that's where the mind control comes in. This is why I like social engineering, because they engineer the social dynamic, the topics, this kind of stuff. Right. Yep. And it, at least um, refer in context to culture, but ultimately the individual takes the action. That's so the, the that, trick. <laughs> that exactly. That's where the problem lies. Right. It lies within the individual and their awareness and what they are actually performing in the world. That's so powerful. You're right. That's kind of the, the illusion they pull is that you're the one doing the action uh, and they're, but they're engineering it. And I, and that leads to, cause that was one of my bullet points too, is that I think I, I talked to people a lot about the social engineers and their agenda. And we've covered a lot of it because I, and the way that they keep us divided, I think we should talk about that. Well, because that is their total goal. I see is they've always got people divided and, and fighting amongst each other on you pick the topic. You're going to have people fighting about it. And I think of how they orchestrate all of these things. I see the black lives matter. You see the trans, gender thing going on now you got politics it's just they've always got people in the state of divide and i just want to get your thoughts on what their you think their agenda is and why do they keep us in the state of divide what what is their the power in doing this absolutely <clears throat> it's perception management for behavior control if there are all these dialectics going on they they're trying to captivate it's entrainment like you have entertainment, this is entrainment, meaning you are you are entrapping the mind, your awareness, what you're focusing on. Because as you know, Rick, what you focus on, where energy goes or where attention goes, energy flows. Yep. So if they can control the availability of information, perception, then they are likely to get the behaviors that they that they want by the individuals. So it's perception management for behavior control. And we're seeing this nowadays with, you know, the internet and the, uh, with AI, you know, really hitting the scene really hard and just the, you know, the age of information. Um, it's, it's ramping up. It's ra sure. and even, even in the alternative, you know, freedom, truth community, there's all this information and it can be overwhelming for times, uh, you know, at some times mm -hmm. for people to take in all this information on all these different dialectics. And this is, you know, one of the core messages that I, that I like to say in an interview is you need to get down to the root of the problem because talking about the dialectics and what has already manifested in this reality is done deal. It already happened, right? It has Great already point. manifested. Yeah. We need to start, we need to be present in the here and now and have our eyes set on the future. And we do this, we create change, right? By getting down to the root of the problem, the causal realm, which is always in mind, what we think, what we believe, what we know. And this is really important. This is why principles are the foundation, like I, like I've said already, yes. but yeah. <clears throat> so it's really important to understand that, um, you know, there's only two ways to, to create change in reality. And that's through philosophy and technology. Philosophy is the internal dialect. Like we're, you and I, we are having philosophy right now. It's asking the big questions. It always starts within oneself, mm -hmm. right? You know, the meaning of life. Why do I do the things that I do? Um, so it always starts with the individual. This is philosophy. And then we can have these conversations and come to a conclusion. And then we can use technology, which is the external force to create a solution, whether it is, you know, computers, um, where we can have an interview from different locations, whether it's a fork, it's a hammer, it's a gun. These are tools. We use technology to create tools. So to create change, we need to have the philosophical understanding of first principles, natural law, truth, and freedom, and natural rights. We need to go through that process internally, and then we need to use technology to use our voice and to spread this message mm -hmm. of true freedom and how to, how to achieve that. And we do that through the external means of technology, and we use our voice. So this is how we're going to um, 
to create change in reality that and, you know, th like I said, right, it's not about, oh, the, you know, Will and Rick are doing it. They're doing a great job. Let them do it. No, it's as many people as possible. We need numbers. We need exactly. numbers of of people getting on the battlefield in their own creative way. Some people might not like to do podcasts or videos, so they they'll write a book. They'll do a sub stack um, Art. or whatever. So many different ways. There's so exactly. many different ways. And I always say people, everybody has a unique talent and you can find a way to do the message in that in with your talent. I mean, not like you said, not everybody wants to do a podcast or a radio show or presentations, but there is something that you're good at and that you're passionate about that you can use in your own unique way. And I think that's such an important thing to say. Uh, such it, a such a beautiful thing about human beings, right? We really are is. equal in rights, in natural rights. But we are extremely diverse in attributes and characteristics. And, you know, this, this is this is consciousness, right? Like bringing it back to the very beginning of freedom, <clears throat> evolving, moving forward, expanding, becoming more complex and unique. Th this is a beautiful thing. So everyone has some type of attribute or talent or has the capacity to learn. That's the key, right? So yeah, yep. exactly. And because I talked to so many people, well, like we were talking like about because I really talk a lot about the slavery aspect, like we covered at the beginning and government, and it's really, really hard for people. And I'm sure you run into it all the time because I know you're busy. You talk to a lot of people that cannot even picture a world that is not run like by a government. And I'm always trying to find solutions. And and you kind of touched on it at the beginning that it okay, let's not call a government. You there's always going to be a structure. In a society, you're going to have people that are that are handing out the chores. I guess I don't. I mean, I'm trying to think of the best words to use, but there, there, society seems to form into these structures, if you know what I mean. But they can't picture that without a government ruling over them. Exactly, like like I mentioned earlier, right? Just think about your daily life, your daily That's interactions. A great way to look at it. It's it, for the most people, it's majority the whole day is based upon voluntary interaction. There's just this external control force that will violate you, um, at, you know, upon its will. So, I mean, it's if crazy. we 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 have the example of cooperation and voluntary interaction in our day-to-day -day lives, so it's not it, the 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 visceral reaction of oh my gosh, well, you know, if there's not government, then you know, humanity is gonna plunge into chaos yep. and we're all gonna die. Like that's just that's a fear-based response. And this is something that, you know, one needs to really dive deep within themselves and work through that. Um, you know, there are two forms of government. There is the external government mm -hmm. <clears throat> that we know that we know right externally, you know, a group of people calling themselves government, you know, claim ha that have the claim of ownership upon everyone else. But there's also internal government because the word government means mind control, gubernare mens. So to control the mind. Now, the internal government, what is that? If you control your mind, that's self-governance. That's responsibility. That's accountability. That's yeah. ownership. So, you know, this is the solution is self-governance. That's what we need. And always boil every conversation that I get into, Will, it always seems to it comes right back around to the person. Like it, the work on yourself, it, every it, it's, it really is that important. And I, and I beat it like a, like it, I beat it like a drum, I guess, because it's constant, but it just seems that all the conversations I've had with so many amazing poop people, including yourself, it always comes back to around that people have to start doing the work on themselves. That's what that, that I think is what the foundation is lacking in most people is that they haven't done. And I know they've taken shadow work down that that's everywhere now that you hear that. Um, but it's a great way to describe it. But doing the work on yourself, it's that's the key to this. Uh, a huge key to this is doing the work and being honest with yourself and being willing to change your beliefs. Like we were saying, tear that down. But that, do you think that that's what most people are missing is the work on themselves? They're looking externally for the answers when they should be internal? Yes, the majority of people are looking external. Right. You know, um, oh, we just have to pass these regulations and these laws. Uh, let's restrict the right. Let's restrict the left. So they're trying to, you know, a good allegory is from Lord of the Rings, the ring of power. All these factions are fighting over the ring of power because when you have the ring of power, you can do anything you want. Mm -hmm. This is what government is. 
It's like the ring of power. So really, people are externalizing, they're projecting their internal confusion out into the world onto government saying, oh, well, we just want to get the ring of power, i.e. government to uh, to to force to violate our will upon others. So they are externalizing it. And, you know, shadow work, it's a very trendy that, term nowadays, especially for. trendy in, <laughs> trend. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Especially in the new age movement and stuff, you know, and ultimately we need to understand that, you know, reality works a certain way. It is objective. This is what natural law is. So understanding the threefold aspect of consciousness, thoughts, emotions, and actions. Right. So how our reality how it manifests our human experience it is done by each individual taking actions right and this this forms the aggregate which creates the 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 totality body of energy and so and this is going to uh, manifest our human experience right that we are co-creators we are not individually creating our realities so we are having a subjective experience in an uh, objective reality so this is what natural law is. So it's important to understand that the law of manifestation is based upon actions, meaning because we are performing the energy, we are moving the energy in the ether, in the field, right? right? So, and our actions, um, our thoughts and emotions precede our actions. So our actions are based upon our thoughts and emotions. So, but ultimately how we act in the world, what we do in the world, our behavior is what moves the energy a certain direction, right? And there's going to be consequences for that. So as I think, so I feel, and so I act. This is unity consciousness. This is what the shadow work is all about. It's all about unifying the three aspects of consciousness, meaning that there's no internal contradiction, meaning what you think aligns with what you feel. There's no contradiction. Therefore, your behavior will be in harmony with natural law and accordance to nature. That makes total sense. I just, that makes so much sense. Well, the way you broke that down and it's so true because I wonder how many people you know, they, their thoughts and don't jive with what they're feeling, like their heart, you know, and, and I truly believe that people, that they feel it, you know, when they're doing a wrong action or they're doing something that's not quite, uh, you know, a, a, you know, correct. I, they know. I always tell people. That's the you, first you, eye. Yeah, yep. I always tell heart people. Space. Like, yeah, I'm like, I always tell people, you know, that you're bullshitting yourself. You know, like your soul tells you. But you let your brain kind of make up all these justifications and excuses and blah, it goes on and on. But you yeah. know when you're and then when that turn when it, they get that all in sync, it's so beautiful when it all works. Absolutely. Yep. The the ego when you know um when people are possessed by their ego, where the ego is dominant, they definitely that 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 knowing that voice from the heart space, mm -hmm. right? That's telling you, no, that is wrong. You can feel that. Then the can, ego yeah. possession, you know, justifies it in some way or manner. And when people follow that, when they follow that ego, the voice of the ego, right? Then it, it almost deafens the, the, um, the feeling, the voice of the heart space. And so, you know, it's, it's about unifying when you unify consciousness, you are it, the alchemical wedding of, um, of self and ego spirit and ego come together, right? This is not about transcending the ego, right. you know, the ego has a very important, um, protocol for this reality for the individual. So it's not about, um, you know, having ego death. It's about controlling the ego. I mean, you, you utilizing the ego as a tool for oneself. That makes so sense. absolutely, yeah, um, really you know, important. the, yep. Unity consciousness, man. This is the, the, the foundation of shadow work for sure. and we, and we don't hear about it that lot, uh, 
you know, that much in these communities, like the new age, it's all about feeling. It's all about what you feel. It's all about what you feel, uh, or it's all about what you think, what you believe. Right. Mm-hmm. So don't, don't think about anything negative. Oh, don't look at that negative information. Cause it will manifest. It's not how reality I, works. I have people that tell me that all the time will it. And, and when it's crazy that if I talk about anything, that's uncomfortable. They'll be like, we can't talk about this. This is like, you know, we, if you, if you talk about anything dark, you're bringing that energy. It's, you're going to manifest it. Even if you talk about it. And then I was telling people I was reading the satanic Bible. I just wanted to read it to know what they're just to know what my enemy's doing and what they're thinking. So I'm looking into it. I want to know their mindset. And this is crazy how the people really believe that just looking into information and taking in knowledge, you're going to, it's a bad thing. They've, they've really, um, fooled people into thinking that. It's total new age deception because in the new age community, they always talk about, oh, I'm doing the shadow work. I'm doing the shadow work. But what is the shadow work? The shadow work is looking at the dark aspects of yourself, right? right? So you are actually looking at the negative uh, characteristics of your own being. So that is looking at the negative. And that is important because if they, if the deception around don't look at the negative, this is what the social engineers want. This is why they propagate this, this ideology because they don't want, they don't want you to, to really increase your awareness a within yourself and B in the external world, like all the, all the bad stuff that's going on. They don't want you to look at that when it's, it's the, it's the traverse, right? I mean, we need to understand, we need to look at the dark aspects, understand them and then integrate them within ourselves. Absolutely. That's so, you're so right. I always look at it too. Well, it's like when these people are like nor, uh, dark topics or, or these, any, or even things about themselves that they don't like when you ignore it. I always akin it to, it's like, if you're sick and you just ignore it, it's like, well, I, I got something wrong with me and I'm, but I'll ignore it. And then that way I want manifesting it and, and disaster is going to happen if you, if you ignore it. Yes. And that's just the way I look at it. It's like, you have to look at these topics. These have to be talked about. And even if you don't agree on them, you can have separate opinions. I, I get that people are complex. Topics are complicated. Life is complicated. I, I, I never want to try to simplify it to the point where, cause I know that like, there's so many different things going, there's so many things going on in life and in people's lives that it's, I think it's, it's not as as simple one answer fits all kind of thing. And I just think that, yeah, I think it's important to say that. Yeah, no, that, that's a good point. You know, I, I actually, I think there's, there is a a balance. There's a median there because yes, life can be complex, but the ego makes it way more complex than it actually is. Yeah. Right. Once you understand principles and natural law, so you truly understand the way the way things operate, it actually is very simple because nature herself operates simply. It just, that's true. And it just, the effect can be in, in an infinite amount of variations and gradients, right? So we, we kind of, we interpret that as complexity, but this is what the social engineers want. This is why they throw all these dialectics at us because it, it overrides and overwhelms the individual. And then the the complexity or the perceived complexity gets unbearable, and you know the the person shuts down, the being shuts down. Yeah. So this is why actions, the law of manifestation, is based on actions, right? Because like you said about being sick, if if you're sick, you're not feeling good, right? And you're just sitting in your room. Well, I'm just gonna think I'm better. I'm gonna feel that I'm better. I'm gonna think that I'm better. I'm gonna feel that I'm better. That's not going to make you better. I mean, eventually your body's going to do what it's going to do. But if you actually get up, drink some, some, um, clean water, eat some fruit, go out into the sun, move, move your body around, then you're going to manifest, um, health way quicker, <laughs> way quicker. Exactly. Exactly. That's because we are moving the energy field in a certain direction. It's like we can look at the ether, right? The field of of energy all around us at all times. We can look at it as water. It's like when you're in a pool, right? And you want to get to the other side. You just don't think and feel that you're at, you're at the other side. You actually have to swim. Action. So you're yeah. you're making waves. So this is the 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 dialect um, the dielectric of 
the, you know, the nature of energy, right? The magnetism that is there. So if we want the floaty to, to come towards us, we have to move our hands in a, um, in a motion where the, the water starts to pull towards us, right? And the floaty reaches us. Same thing with manifestation as well. If you want a new job, you just don't think I got a new job or feel like I got a new job. You actually have to go out there and actually apply, send out applications. You know, you have to put in the work. Yep. This is what action is. Act ion. Act means to perform. Ion is energy, like a charged particle, mm-hmm. or your eye on, right? Right. That makes so. total sense. Wow. And and it's and now because you were talking about this, just people will want to just say things and then it'll come to them. I just think of that whole that the the book, The Secret, and the movie, The Secret, where they're like, oh, just you know, think about it and it'll manifest. And it's just another stand down. It's to me, it's just another stand down agenda where they just are showing. They're making people not take action. Correct. And, yeah. And that's half what truth. they're doing. In, yeah, half truths. They kind of give you the half truth, and then they cut it off at that point, and then people are kind of stuck in this non action stand down mode. That's the way I see people in most cases. Is they're in this stand down mode, or a lot of people I've talked to, they've just basically given up they're just they're so overwhelmed which you did mention earlier i think that's a good point and that you brought up and that to bring it back and get it go back to simple i guess is a good way to put it mm. yeah it's no key. well said wow very interesting well said stuff. and 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 you know and to tie it all to the beginning of our conversation sure. when you ask the majority of people are you open-minded the majority of people go yeah 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 i'm, I'm open-minded yeah. but what is open-mindedness Right. To be open minded means you are open to receive new information with a willingness to change. This is the problem. So you have all these, you know, stand down movements, right? I mean, all these ideologies, these limiters of consciousness, these boxes that people get stuck in because they're not truly open minded. You know, there's a lot of truth speakers out there that are putting forward valuable information. And most people just have that emotional reaction and just put their hand up and, you know, and turn the other cheek and walk away. So to truly be open minded, meaning means that we have a willingness to change within ourselves. So vital. It is vital. And and that's a great way to end it, Will. And I, I. Wow, there's so much great information that you brought today. I'm so thankful that you came and and did this. I I look forward to our conversations. I really do. I learned so much from our discussions, and it really gets me thinking about things in a different way, and uh, it's uh, very powerful. And I just hope that people are willing to at least question their, their own beliefs and hearing what we're talking about and to look at things maybe a little different and get more active. That that's I totally agree with you, Will, that that is so key. The, to the action part is what a lot of people are missing that I talk to. They they kind of know what's going on. They, they, they're they willing, but they just lack the action. So very powerful uh, conversation today, Will. Thank you so much. I want to make sure I give you the last couple of minutes. Can you, anything you want to let people know where they can find all your work what uh, you have coming up, anything like that. The floor is yours, my friend. Excellent. And I always love our conversations, Rick. They they flow really good. We get into a lot of uh, great insight, and I, I value your, your opinion and your information. And you're doing the great work, man. You're doing fantastic content, so keep it up. Thank you. Um, and thank you to all the, the, the listenership that have tuned in checked out this video. I hope you found value into it. Definitely uh, go to my link tree, link tree slash Will Keller. You can get to all my social media platforms. Uh, I am responsive. You can get to my website, naturalfreedomleague.com. Um, and you can message me if you have questions. I do a lot of live uh, presentations as well. Um, and my presentation for the upcoming Funnel 3 conference, June 24th and 25th, it will be internal ecology the art of living wisely so you know we touched a little bit on this uh, earlier about et- morality and ethics yep. and i'm really going to dive into the internal environment the the universe inside of us and our the psychological emotional physical um uh, categories of right. one's being so looking forward to that uh you, what a great chat thanks rick thanks for having oh, me on so it's welcome. always 
always a pleasure. And of course, I'm also on the one great work network.com yeah. under Will Keller. So I'll please sure check that links. out. Yeah, Linktree. I got to get a Linktree. Yeah, I know you mentioned that to me a while ago and I just haven't got around to it. I got to have to do that because it's just like a one stop shop for everything. Yeah, no, it, it, it works out good. Yeah, definitely. And I and you're welcome back anytime, Will, because I do want to get you back again in the future to talk about the trans uh, humanism movement. I, I Like a lot of people are really, people I know in my life that are so excited, they would join up with technology. If you could stick a chip in their head right now and they could just be part of the whole, like they could just basically shut down and live in a tech world. Like, I mean, like uh, this matrix, they would do it. I know they would. Yeah, I, I would That's love a, to come back on and wow. talk about that topic. That's a big topic, yep. very important. It's the you know, it's the end game. It really is. Yeah, so that can be our part two maybe for this one because I really want to get into that with you. But I want to. I don't want to keep make this one too too much longer. So uh, definitely, I will have you back and we can touch on that because as you said, I think there's a that's a big one, is where they're steering humanity. So it'll be a great topic for sure. Excellent, Rick. I appreciate you, brother. I do too. And uh, I will keep in touch with you, Will, and take care. Keep doing the amazing work that you're doing, my friend. You are really doing great things out there. And uh, I really look forward to what you're, the content that you're going to be putting out. I keep an eye on it and I learn a lot from it. So thank you for everything that you do. Thanks, brother. All right. right Have a great day, my friend. You too. Okay. Peace, brother. Well, there we have it, my friends. Another incredible, incredible interview with such an incredible person. I cannot thank Will enough for coming and talking to me. We covered a lot of important topics, touched on a lot of sensitive subjects, and I just, you know, hopefully you guys stuck through it and you listened and it's going to get you guys thinking about the topics, you know, that are out there. There's big topics and we covered some of them. We're talking about a lot of different things that are sensitive to people and a lot of people as soon as you bring up these topics they have a immediate reaction and they and you know it's a tough one but we have to have these discussions and I'm willing to have them and I'm trying to stay you know in the middle as neutral as I can and look at all aspects of it and that is what I think we all have to be willing to do I don't as I was saying to Will I just think it's life is complicated I get that people are complicated everybody's different so there's a lot of things, but I do love what Will said is that you know, have to bring it back because once you really come in an alignment, you align your life to natural law and you, it really becomes simple in a lot of ways. And, and it's just all this outside noise and all of this we're being bombarded with every day. That's what is keeping us confused and makes things complicated. So... Wow, very powerful, guys. I really enjoyed that with Will, and I will have him back for a part two, I promise you guys, because I do want to get into that topic that we were mentioning, the whole transhumanism. That's another big one, and I do, honest to God, have friends that I really do think if you could just shut their bodies down and plug them into a, a computer and they could be like just wired right in 24-7, they would do it. I really truly believe that. I just know people that would. They they really uh, look forward to that. I don't. I'm just like wow. I just I really once you're in a system, they and you. That's a whole topic. I'm gonna leave that one for when we get Will back on here. It's a topic that I did have with Jamie J. We got into that. Of course, I couldn't play it here on YouTube. They flagged it before it even premiered. But you can find it on my Rumble channel. So head over to my Rumble channel. It's Crypt Ricks. I've been thinking all one word. And I got the great thing about my Rumble channel, guys, is that there is interviews like this Jamie J one I'm speaking about and a few other ones that I couldn't post here. That's where you're going to find those ones. So it's kind of cool, you know, to definitely subscribe here and follow me here. But please head over to my Rumble channel and then you'll get the benefit of seeing some of the interviews that I can't post here. So that is one of the benefits, guys. And uh, definitely very cool and an amazing topic. I really enjoy always having Will on because we cover so many important things that, you know, people just have to to uh, start thinking about and getting active. There's so many aspects that we have to change. I do want to go ahead. We did talk about it at the beginning, and I'm going to wrap up the show at the end with it. We are talking about the Trivium, guys. That's right, and it is going to be an amazing event. We are talking a show that is going to be two days long. It is a live event, live June 24th and 25th. 
the Trivium Knowledge, Understanding, and Wisdom. It is a free online event, so just head over to freedomundernaturallaw.com and register. As I said, it is free, guys. Look at all the incredible speakers that are going to be there. So many to name. I can't name them all, but we're going to have, of course, the guest that I had on just now, Will Keller. We got Mark Passio. We got music from Diesel Automatic. We got Stephanie Mo Davis, Chris Jansen, Brandon Martin, Logan Hart, Leslie Powers, James True, <laughs> Corey Enderlot. I mean, Mario West. There's so many. This is such a group of amazing people that are doing amazing content and powerful content. So please mark this on your calendar, guys, if you already haven't, and make sure you're there. And as we were saying at the beginning, Will and I, what makes this to me such a unique conference and online event is that at the end of each day, you're gonna be there's gonna be a round table. And if you have any questions for the speakers of that day, write them down and you will have a chance to go in and ask them yourself. Get some clarification if you need it, but you will have the chance to address the speaker that you uh would like to speak to if you have a question, need an answer, need some clarification, you will get that chance at the end of each day. That to me is what makes it so unique and so valuable and so really cool actually is that you get to do that. So please guys, mark that on your calendar. That is June 24th and 25th, the Trivium. I'm going to be there. Hopefully you're going to be there and it's going to be a great two-day event. So check it out guys. Make sure you head over to freedomundernaturallaw.com and register. It's free. No excuses there guys. If it's free, you guys got to show up. So there we go, guys. I just want to thank you all once again for joining me, for joining uh, and supporting me, joining me and supporting my shows. I appreciate each and every one of you that leave comments. I love to hear what you guys are thinking. I love the encouragement you guys are giving me. I really enjoy doing these events and these uh, presentations that I do, the interviews that I do, the radio shows that I do. It's all to help get freedom out there, get natural law out there teach people about it it's so important guys so i do appreciate each and every one of you thank you so much please stick around make sure you uh, keep an eye on my channel because i got so many amazing interviews lined up uh this month that i'm so excited there's i got some great guests lined up so just keep an eye out i'm going to try to post a new interview every week which i have been holding true to for the last few weeks or actually like like the last month or so so very cool guys so i just want to go ahead and uh wrap this one up here it's been a long one but a very valuable one guys so let me just go back in here i want to go up and say hello once again and goodbye hopefully you guys are having like i said have a safe week weekend wherever whenever you're listening to this i can never tell thanks to time zone so you know wherever you are i hope you're doing great i hope you're out there doing the great work and just remember that you are the greatest nobody is better at being you than you and i will see you very soon guys so take care Take care of each other and stay safe. Peace, guys. Are you interested in the paranormal? Murder mysteries. Cryptocurrency and thought-provoking interviews. Then check out Crypt Rick's I've Been Thinking on YouTube or every Monday night at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Studio A at Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com. Welcome to the Crypt. <laughs>